so we'll look into the next topic which is about the twist drill now quite natural that if i am required to drill on this surface and if i am required to drill a hole on some wooden surface or if you require to drill a hole in the composite material or if you need to drill a hole in uh, iron or in aluminium quite natural that we would require different types of drill isn't it so that that means the material would vary depending on the place where we are required to do the drilling and to cut anything quite natural the material that you are using to cut anything should be harder compared to the material which is being cut isn't it if i need to cut make a mark or drill on this table surface quite natural the thing that i would require to cut it that must be harder than this yes or no otherwise it won't cut right so for aluminium i would require drill bit which is harder than aluminium itself and if i need to drill steel in that case i would require drill bit which is harder than steel yes or no so the material would be different depending on the uh, material we are drilling in based on that the material of the drill bit would be different first thing second thing is the angle would be different the cutting angle could be different the diameter could be different isn't it correct so the diameter of the drill bit could be different the material could be different the angle could be different the cutting angle could be different so depending on this we can say we'll have to know and identify drill based on the length based on the diameter based on the metal and then we also need to know about the nomenclature what specifically we call each part of the drill as you have seen drill it has got some spiral bone cut isn't it some spiral shape so that spiral shape they cut one of the portion is depressed and the other portion is the one which is exposed isn't it so the portion which is the depressed portion is called the flute and the one which is raised that is known as the land the part of the drill bit where you can see this uh, spiral cut so that portion is the body and the remaining portion the plain portion is the shank okay so we have got flute we have got land we have got shank and we have got body and then the point which you would stick to the surface before you start the drilling so that is known as the point so these are the nomenclature so you are required to no what exactly we call each part of the drill okay so these are called twist drill so the shank is that part of the twist drill that is required to be crimped into the drilling machine now the drilling machine could be electrically operated it could be pneumatically operated it could be hand operated so the drill bit need to be attached to the drilling machine and the point of attachment of the drill bit to the drilling machine so that point is the shank okay and it is on the shank that the detail of the drill the diameter and everything related to the drill bit that will be engraved in the shank 
portion on drill up to half inch as you can see it is given in your book the shank is parallel and is placed on a jaw of self centering chuck so chuck means the portion of the drilling machine where you were attaching the drill bit that portion is uh, called chuck drill chuck now the drill bit can wobble and you require something which can center itself even if there is slight movement it must be able to center itself so it is self centering on drill above half inch the shank is usually tapered and the tapering ratio is 1 is to 20 so what you need to remember regarding the shank we can have two type of shanks one is parallel and the other is tapered for drill bit up to the size of half inch the shank is straight parallel and for size more than half inch the uh, drill shank is tapered and the tapering ratio is 1 is to 20 so this thing you need to keep in mind the tapered shank usually ends in a tang so we have seen what exactly is tang in terms of file isn't it you remember in the file the tang portion that would be attached to the handle so here also we have got tang and this tang is used to provide positive drive so what exactly is positive drive if i am applying force in this direction it must move the movement must be proportional to the force and there must not be any slippage in it okay so assume this one i am applying force through this one and it is moving all right but then if there is some oil in between my finger tip in that case the entire force might not be transmitted isn't it and there could be slippage right yes or no so that is not positive drive so if there is slippage no positive drive if there is no slippage and the amount of force i am applying and the movement is proportional without any slippage action so that is positive drive so in order to provide this positive drive we have got the tang which is necessary to overcome the higher forces when drilling with large diameter drill so you need to remember what is the purpose of tang the purpose of tang is to provide positive drive when it is essential it is essential in case of drill bit of larger size in order to overcome the larger forces in order to overcome higher forces in larger drill bit we and we want positive drive in those cases the requirement of tang is essential okay so as you have seen in the nomenclature regarding land and flute so this flute is quite natural helical in shape isn't it so it is helical the helical that is why they have referred this term helical flute the helical flute formed in the drill body provides a rake angle now what exactly is rake angle if you look at the cutting of the uh the this helical portion so it is it must be inclined at certain angle isn't it 
Correct? Yes or no? It is being inclined, moving like this. Correct? It could move like this. It could move like this. So the angle, angle here, are different. Right? So this is right. So the helical fluid formed in the body provides a rake angle for the cutting edge of the drill. The fluting also allows, so what is the purpose of having this fluid? So because of this depression we are getting between the fluid and uh, uh, that is being formed because of uh, the fluid, because the land portion is the portion which is exposed and the depressed portion is the fluid. So because of this depressed portion, because whenever you are drilling, it tends to get heated up and if that happens, because of the heat, that thing can break down and we need to provide lubrication. The cutting edge could also get damaged because of the heat. So every time whenever you are drilling, we need to put some lubricants, <coughs> cooling fluid. Now this cooling fluid that we are using to cool down the heat that is being generated during the drilling operation that needs to be drained out isn't it so we require some type of drainage system and the fluid is providing that drainage okay So the cutting fluid the flu allows any lubricant to flow towards the cutting edge and provides a path for the waste material to move clear. Whenever we are drilling the material that is being removed, we also require passage for it to be removed, isn't it? So it is being removed through this fluid. So the fluid is providing dual purposes. It is allowing the cutting fluid, the lubricants move and also allowing the material that is being cut or removed to move out. Okay. The land of the drill actually touches the wall of the hole. Definitely the land that portion which is raised it would touch to the wall of the hole isn't it that's what our intuition says correct yes or no so it must touch the wall of the hole and steadies the drill bit during rotation because we want to make it steady so to make it steady we require some gripping and with the uh, land in touch with the inside diameter of the drill hole it would provide the friction and that would generate the force which would make the drill bit steady. In order that the drill will cut properly, the point must be ground to the correct shape. As I mentioned to you, this cutting angle we have got the drill bit. Now this cutting angle could be different, isn't it? So the cutting angle could be different. So what could be the cutting angle? It could range from 59 degree, you need to remember this, and 118 is the inclusive. exactly it mean is either this angle or inclusive either this angle or inclusive okay so it would range from 59 degree and twice of 59 is 118 isn't it 
so inclusive is 118 degree a clearance angle of 12 degree and whip angle of 130 degree are typically used for metal cutting such as on aluminium alloy cast steel sorry steel cast iron copper so you need to remember the cutting angle and typical cutting angle for a normal twist drill used for general cutting application is 59 degree and all inclusive is 118 degree with a clearance angle of 12 degree and web angle of 30 degree okay now if you look at the diagram given in your book you can find the web angle and the clearance angle what exactly is web angle point angle or clearance angle the point of the drill bit is inclined at certain angle isn't it right yes or no and then you could see the land so the land the edge of the land is making certain angle with the cutting plane uh, with the point cutting point and with the cutting point being inclined to certain degree so the angle between that inclined plane of the cutting point along with the edge of the land so that angle is the web point oh, sorry web angle or the point angle <laughs> if you look at the drill so this is your point now this point is definitely the plane of the point is inclined the plane of the this setting point is inclined at certain angle and this edge of the land is also inclined at certain angle so the angle between this edge or between the plane of the land along with the edge which this setting plane is directing so the angle between this two is the point angle or the way back <coughs> and then you can see the clearance angle the land is having two edges if you try to look from the top it has got two edges isn't it so the angle between them is what we call as the clearance angle okay so you are required to remember what is the cutting angle you need to remember what is the clearance angle <coughs> and the web angle in case of a typical drill bit used for normal general purpose metal cutting that includes aluminium, copper, cast iron, steel. It is essential that the drill point is central. Quite natural, it must be central. Central means it should be in the center, isn't it? And that the cutting angle of 59 degree are equal definitely because if that is not the case if the drill bit is not central and the cutting angle are not equal in that case you will get offset the hole the hole won't be centered it will be slightly offset an offset point or unequal cutting edge 
will cause the unbalanced rotation wobbling and finally that would result in the whole diameter which is oversized slightly oversized to achieve the desired cutting and clearance angle a drill grinding attachment may be found attached to a grinding wheel in the tumble workshop you will find some attachment to ensure that this angle is correct hand grinding sharpening of drill if the cutting edge is not sharp it is getting blunt in that case you can sharpen it and it is purpose of your general work for high standard of hope required to receive rivet the pressurized skin of aircraft it is common practice to discard drill which have become blunt and replace them with a new one so if you are drilling hole in pressurized compartment you need to replace the if the drill bit is damaged if it is blunt in that case you need to remove that and use new drill so as i told to you that the metal of the drill bit would be different so what could be the different type of a metal that are being used in the manufacturing of the drill bit it could be carbon steel it could be high speed steel or it could be cobalt steel it could be carbon steel so in addition to iron and carbon contain various amount of manganese self silicon for self of phosphorus the letter cs may be found in the shank of the drill so if it is carbon steel drill so we'll get this term cs what are the things you need to keep in mind so far what we have studied now you need to remember that what must be the cutting angle web angle inclusion angle clearance angle of a normal drill bit you need to remember how can you or can you actually sharpen the drill bit if it is if the cutting edge is damaged yes we can can we use the same technique of you know working on the cutting edge sharpening it and use that to drill hole in a pressurized compartment no we cannot because these are precision holes the cutting point need to be centered why is it essential because if it is not centered in that case it could lead to enlarged hole at the same time it could result in wobbling uneven movement of the drill bit whenever you are putting the drill bit to the drilling machine and allowing it to rotate so the rotation won't be steady and there will be wobbling unsteady movement and that will finally result in uneven hole size okay what are the different material we can, uh, we can have drill bit made of carbon steel we can have drill bit made of uh, cobalt and we can have uh, drill bit made of high speed steel if it is made of carbon steel in that case the letter cs will be marked in the shank portion of the drill bit okay any doubt so far high speed that why high speed operation quite naturally if the speed of rotation becomes very high the friction will be very high and it would get heated up so if that get heated up the cutting edge could be damaged right so if we are manufacturing drill which are made of high speed steel in that case the cutting edge will be retained even at this high 
temperature condition. You know, whenever we heat it up, the how we, we, we measure the heat. Either we can measure the heat by using uh, thermometer, simple. Other could be some sort of, uh, you know, we can put some crayon and see at what temperature each of these crayon change color, burn and change color. Another way to identify heat. Another way could be when, because different heat, heat is some sort of an energy and how are you going to identify that heat in terms of the color of the fire. Sometimes it will be white, sometimes it will be blue. You have seen that, isn't it? The fire color might, could change right from white to yellow to blue to red. So this color is an indication of the temperature. Okay. Being extremely brittle, carbon cobalt steel drills are also quite brittle because of this the use of this drill can be very dangerous so strict observance of the recommended cutting speed is essential if you are using the cobalt uh, drill bit as we have seen before that the diameter is marked on the shank along with the material it is uh, manufactured of so all these things will be marked in the uh, shank of the drill bit. What are the common methods of identifying the diameter of the twist drill? You need to remember this. Either it can be marked in terms of the metric or it can be in fractions of inches that means the you know, foot pound second the FPS unit either in terms of metric or in terms of FPS British unit or in terms of some letter or some uh, number A, B, C, D or 1, 2, 3, 4 okay so some range of numbers so either it would be by some letters by numbers or in terms of SI unit or in terms of inches fraction of inches 1 by 60 into uh, half inch quarter of an inch so either in terms of inches or in terms of mm 0.1 mm 0.2 mm or in terms of some number 1, 2, 3, 4 or in terms of some letter A, B, C, D. Okay, so you need to remember this how you identify the diameter. So it could be identified in terms of fractions of inches, it could be identified in terms of metric unit or in terms of some numbers and letters. Okay, any doubt so far? In the metric range, the smallest commercially available drill size drill has a diameter of 0.35 mm and the increment is from 0.05 mm up to 5 mm and the, the increment is in 0.1 mm. So you are not required to remember this thing. The measurement and all, you are not required, no one is going to ask you questions on how they are, how the increment measurement is done what is the smallest size and all you just have to keep in back of your mind that this you know there are some minimum size and there are some maximum size and there, the, the, in, there is some increment in size in terms of like you know like 0 0.1 is a specific so there is a specific way to increase the drill bit size so each successive drill bit size is getting increased by 0 0.1 mm so in the back of your mind you just need to remember this no questions are asked from these things okay in terms of fraction the minimum size is 1 by 64th of an inch and proceeding in steps of 1 by 64th up to 1 5 by 8 inch and then in steps of 1 by 32 inch up to 3 inch diameter so the smallest you can see is 1 by 64 of an inch and the largest is 3 inches the inch measurement you could remember if you want 
there might be questions asked from the inch measurement. Smallest is 164, largest is 3 inches. The increment from 164 to 1 5 by 8 is in terms of 1 by 64 inch and from 1, 1 5 by 8 to 3 inches the increment is in terms of 1 by 32 of an inch. So you can remember this question could be asked from this line. The inch measure measurements. The number it could range from 80 to 1 and the letter A to Z. The smallest size is 80 and with so this thing you need to remember that the largest number in indicate the smallest size 80 the largest number it indicate the smallest size but not in terms of letter in terms of letter a is the smallest and z is the largest but in terms of number the larger the number the smaller the size okay you need to remember this so then in your book you have been given some tables regarding the size metric size so you can ignore if the drill is too small to have the size stamped on their shank then either a drill gauge or a micrometer should be used to establish its, its size correctly Remember this line, if you fail to notice because the drill bit being too small in size and if you are not very sure regarding its, its measurement, in that case you can manually take the measurement and how are you going to, man to manually take the measurement by using either the, uh, the, the uh, micrometer or by using the uh, drill gauge, remember this line. So remember the use of lubricant. The use of lubricant is to provide lubrication as the name suggests and apart from that it also helps to dissipate or to remove the heat that is generated during drilling operation. For twist drill, the speed of rotation is very important. Because if sometimes the speed of rotation is too high, the heat generated could be higher. So, and for different material, we require different type of cutting speed. So speed has got some requirement. So we need to follow the speed limitation. We cannot compromise on speed. Most of the hand reel has speed limitation. It is limited to one speed the breast press is not limiting to one speed remember we have seen that before again I'm telling you so the breast press has not one speed limitation but no, normally all this uh, hand drill uh, drilling machine is limited to one speed and most of this uh, electrically drill I know electrical drilling machine you can change the speed of rotation because it has got different gears involved so by using this gear changing mechanism we can have variable speed range depending on the work that we require so we can have variable speed range So, what we have studied so far, we have seen that <coughs> we can have a drill bit which can be made of carbon steel, we can have drill bit that could be made of cobalt, we can have drill bit which could be made of high speed steel. If it is made of high speed steel, in that case, uh, HS will be stamped in the shank portion. Cobalt is brittle, so you need to be careful while using the cobalt uh, drill. 
this high speed steel it retains their cutting edge at very high temperature and that is its main advantage uh, the size of the drill bit can be specified in terms of metric unit in terms of inches and in terms of letters and digits the letters could vary from a to z while a is the smallest and z being the highest it could be in terms of numbers ranging from 80 to 1 where 80 being the smallest and 1 being the largest it could be in terms of metric where the size could vary from 0.35 mm to uh, 0. Point, uh, sorry 5 mm and the increment is in terms of 0. 0.1 mm this you don't need to remember it could be in terms of inches but the size the smallest size could vary from 1 by 64 of an inch to 1 by 2 1 5 by 8 inch and the increment is in terms of 1 by 64 of an inch or next is from 158 to 3 inches where the increment now will be in terms of 1 by 32 of an inch you need to remember this we can have different types of cutting fluid what for do you require cutting fluid apart from providing lubrication it also helps to remove the heat so depending on the type of material we can have different type of cutting fluids and uh, you are required to remember this cutting fluid for mild steel we are using soluble oil for high uh, speed steel and for alloy steel we use kerosene or turpentine for aluminium alloy we use kerosene and for cast iron and brass we generally don't require any lubricants next what you need to remember the cutting speed is also very important but if you are using hand drill in that case this problem will be there because these are single speed operation we cannot change the speed except in case of breast press which uh, where we can definitely change because it has got two speed range and the normal electrically operated drill drilling machine we can have multiple speed range and how we can achieve this variable speed we can do so by use of the gears okay so these are the things you need to keep in mind. The next topic is about drilling. Now if I need to drill very small hole up to quarter inch. So you can see in your book the diameter gi uh, given in terms of mm and in terms of inches you can ignore the mm thing because questions are generally not asked from mm it is generally asked in terms of inches so if the diameter is up to quarter inch the depth of the center punch mark will usually accommodate the non-cutting chisel like point of the drill keeping it on center guiding the drill until it is established in the mantle. When hole diameter is more than quarter inch the center punch mark is not large enough to accept the non-cutting point of the drill and in that case before you carry out the actual drilling we need to drill a small hole which we call as the pilot drill and that hole as the pilot hole so you need to remember this okay so up to quarter inch because as we know that before we start the drilling because the drill point the cutting point can wobble around and we need to mark a point so that the you know we get the starting point of the drill and the drilling the drill bit does not wobble around and for that we use center punch the marking of the center punch is sufficient only when the drill size is 
the hole that you are drilling that size is quarter inch up to quarter inch if it is more than quarter inch in that case the uh, center punch mark is not sufficient we need to drill a small hole this small hole we call the pilot hole and or the pilot drill so before we carry out drilling if the drill hole size is supposed to be more than quarter inch in that case we need to carry out the pilot drill pilot hole so you need to remember this okay so the, what is the purpose of the pilot drill it provides or it guides the actual drill because the normal punch mark center punch mark is not providing the necessary gripping so it is not guiding it properly so in order to guide the drill bit properly we use this pilot drill okay a small drill the pilot drill whose diameter is slightly larger than the non cutting point of the finished size drill you remember what specific size how are you going to select the size of the pilot drill whose diameter is slightly larger than the non cutting point of the actual drill okay so that's how you are going to select the proper pilot drill size the pilot drill is replaced by the finished drills which can be guided through the pilot hole to complete the drilling process so what thing you need to remember in this prior to carrying out the drilling we need to do the marking so for marking we are using center punch if the size of the drill hole would be drill hole is less than quarter inch okay so if the size is less than quarter inch whatever the size is if it is less than quarter inch in that case we are using center punch but if the size is more than quarter inch in that case apart from using center punch this plus we are using the pilot drill next what you need to remember is how are you going to select the correct size of the pilot drill so in order to select the correct size of the pilot drill what you need to know this is your normal drill with this as the non cutting edge so whatever this non cutting point is it should the pilot drill size should be slightly bigger than this one so drill this portion initially after this is being drilled then use the normal drill and drill so this is providing the uh, guidance this pilot drill is providing the guidance for the actual drill and always remember that we need to use the correct type of cutting fluid any doubt so far hmm? yes not exactly finished the next portion counter sinking is also somewhat related to drilling so the next topic we will be looking at is stop or the dimpling tool and counter sinking tool so this are also similar to drill bit now 
you know if you look at the name counter sinking tool what exactly is counter sinking let's say we have got a screw the screw can have this type of head isn't it can have correct right? right now the screw can also have this type of head so this is Countersink. This type of shape is countersink. Now, if I need to install a rivet of this head type, a countersunk head, and this rivet is installed in the skin of the aircraft, which is exposed to the airflow. So because the skin being exposed to the airflow, we cannot use this type of round head rivet because this round head rivet can create turbulence. So you want this type of rivet head because this will remain flush to the surface and won't create turbulence. So this is the rivet uh, skin. So you drill the hole and then this is where we have got your you know rivet installed. This is why we have got your rivet installed. Okay, so this is the matter where we have got this rivet installed. Now, if you look at it, quite naturally and clearly, you can see that this diameter and this diameter are different, isn't it? So that means in this scheme, I need to create this type of depression so that this can match with this configuration. Right? So for this, we are using countersink. Now this could be very thin. And if that is the case, probably the normal countersinking tool won't, uh, you know, if we use the normal countersinking tool in that case, it could damage this skin. So then we use dimpling. So these are basically used to provide this depression so that it can accommodate this countersinking configuration in the, into this structure. Now, if you are installing it in a part which is thick, then we can use countersink. If it is installing it in a part which is very thin, the normal countersinking tool we use it could damage and then we'll be using this dimpling so whether you are using dimpling or countersinking that would depend on the thickness of the part that we are required to use it and the purpose of both is to provide this depression in the skin in order for the skin to accommodate this countersinking rivet or whatever okay so this is in general a brief idea what countersinking and dimpling is all about. Two special tools used during the riveting process. These are stop countersinking and press countersinking. Now if you look at the term cross, sorry, uh, stop. I want the countersinking only up to this limit let's see in other place i require the counter sinking to be of this limit because for this probably i'm having i'm using this one and for this i'm using this one so we have got different depth of counter sink. So for this, I, I need to stop it at this level. 
isn't it? And for this, up to this, I don't need to stop it. So in order to and make our tool a bit flexible so that I can use it for different depth, we require some stop. I can stop here, I can stop here, right? Stop compressing. So stop countersinking and press countersinking is used. Both these tools are have evolved as a result of for the need for flush skin on high performance aircraft. Flush skin means the hardware remain flush to the surface and not exposed. Okay. If it is like this, it is flush. To the surface if it is like this then exposed right the head could be exposed it could be flush to the surface if it is exposed there will be additional drag because of the turbulence if it is flush to the surface it will be aerodynamically more smooth for better performance so high speed aircraft use uh, hardware which remain flush to the surface and not exposed because exposed means there will be drag there will be turbulence In order to have the rivet head flush with the surface, the skin must be prepared by either, either cutting away a portion of the metal to match the taper of the rivet head or by indenting or pressing the edges of the hole in order to accept the rivet head. If the top sheet of the metal being joined is thicker, if the sheet of the metal that is being joined is thicker than the stepper portion, okay? If the sheet of the metal being joined is thicker than the tapered portion of the rivet head, then the material should be cut countersunk. We need to cut it. While the standard countersunk bit or the twist drill twice the diameter of the rivet hole can be used. So for this, what we use, either we can use the normal standard countersinking tool or also we can use a twist drill with a diameter of the rivet, twice the diameter of the rivet hole. Okay. So this is a scheme, as you the skin. I need to drill a hole. So I can drill a hole like this and twice the diameter. So this is the diameter, now I am taking twice the diameter because here I need to install this shape. So I am drilling with either I can use normal countersinking tool or I can use another drill bit, twice the size of the actual drill bit and then drill it. Now, with this diameter more than this diameter less, so that means now this can accommodate this one, isn't it? Correct? Right? So either we can use a normal countersinking tool or we can use a drill bit, twice the size of the actual drill. Okay? Any doubt? While the standard countersunk or a twice or a drill size twice can be used in hand or power drill to form the countersunk hole, the lack of accuracy and consistency means that they are only useful for small jobs and certainly they should not be used where pressurized skin are concerned. While large number of holes need to be countersunk 
to a consistent depth then stop counter sunking tool is used so this is how if you look at your book the stop counter sunking uh, tool looks like because if i need to do counter sinking in a single place i can have slight variation as well no problem but if we need to do consistently over a large area so we need to ensure that the depth is uniform yes or no correct exactly matching to the specific hardware that we are supposed to install more so this accuracy is important if it is some sort of a pressurized compartment if you are installing this in a pressurized compartment where you require very optimum level of accuracy so there we cannot rely on this makeshift thing so we will be straight away using the stop counter sunk okay So this stop counter sunk, it can be adjusted to cut an exact counter sunk repeatedly, regardless of the force applied to the drill or to the you know whatever the uh, uh, force you are applying to the counter sinking tool, irrespective of the force you are applying, we can have an even type of counter sinking, and that is the purpose of having countersinking tool okay so remember irrespective of the force you apply if you are using stop countersink will have even depth it does the depth of the indentation is not depending on the force you are applying if you are using stop countersink okay the pilots the one which is providing force for the indentation because sometimes we would require different diameter of indentation so that means i must have a provision of changing the, the head which would provide the indentation isn't it so that's what it is written here the pilots can be changed depending on the size of the hole in the material the stop will be held rigid, rigidly during cutting to prevent marking on the surface so you need to remember what why the stop or what damage could the stop uh, have on the work so if it is not being held rigidly it can leave some marking on the surface for different uh, countersinking size we will use the different type of or different sizes of the pilot Okay. Next is press counter sinking or dimpling. So as I mentioned to you that if it is too thin, we cannot use the counter sinking, and in that case, we will be using this dimpling guys. We have got two different types of dimpling, point dimpling or radius dimpling. So remember what are the, uh, the use of countersunk and dimpling. Countersunk for thicker, for thin sheet metal we are using dimpling dies. There are two types of dimpling dies. One is radius dimpling and other is point dimpling. So initially we will look into the point dimpling. The coin dimpling forces the sheet into the lower die. So you can see here the die. Oh, sorry, you cannot see. You look at your book. Can you see the die? Lower die. So if you. Yeah, 
Then what it should not be? You drill the hole. You need to provide this shape. You need to give this shape. To give this shape, you can deform it, isn't it? Yes or no? And if you are deforming it by applying some force, definitely you require something here to support, isn't it? Correct? And this support must also have this indentation. So that after the, you are applying the force, this can move into this depression and you get the perfect depression. So this is the lower die. So we have got lower die and then we can also have the upper die. Upper die could be because what we require is this sort of thing, isn't it? Right? When this is applied here because of the force, this get depressed. So this could be the upper die and this could be the lower die. Right? And in between you are placing the sheet metal. You are drilling the hole, putting the sheet metal in between the upper die and the lower die. And that's how we can do this dimple. So coin dimpling forces the shade into the lower die, leaving a sharply defined and parallel sided hole. This process also allows a number of sheet to be stacked together at the expense of a complex pair of tools and leaves a neat clean dimpled hole with smooth sides. We can use number of this stack together and do the dimpling. So in case of coin dimpling, what we are using, we are using a lower die, upper die, isn't it? A male die and a female die. And we are forcing the metal into the lower die. Radius dimpling uses a male die to drive the sheet into the female die. The sides of the formed hole are not as smooth as that of the coin dimpling method, but this less precise operation is quicker and cheaper to achieve. So with the radius dimpling, we are not getting the desired degree of precision, but then we are getting things done at a you know cheaper, less expensive. So where precision is not a very uh, or the highest criteria for us in that case, we'll go for radius dimpling, and if pre precision is the most important thing, in that case, we'll go for the coin dimpling. Now, if we need to carry out dimpling on material which is harder, so if the material is harder, so the force won't be sufficient for the material to get deformed. And so, in order to deform it, we need to make it bit softer. So how can you make it softer? By heating it up, isn't it? Yes or no? So we'll heat it up. Now where will I need to do the heating? The heating generally won't be done on the metal itself, but in these dimpling dies. Now that we can allow some hot oil to flow through this dies and the heat will be transferred to the metal and that's how the metal will get soft and will ease the uh, deformation process or we could have some resistant oil, uh, coil into it 
where whenever you turn on the, uh, the, the electrical supply, the resistance coil will get heated up and then the heat will be transferred to the metal. Okay, so either we can have oil being circulated, a high temperature oil being circulated that will allow the heat to be transferred from the dye to the skin or we can have the electrical heating coil. Okay, any doubt? <laughs> so that's all about drilling, uh, countersinking and dimpling. So what are the things you need to keep in mind when we require dimpling and when we require countersinking? Countersinking, if it is thicker for thin, we use dimpling. Countersinking can be done by the use of countersinking tool. If countersinking tool is not available, in that case we can use drill bit. Right? We can use drill bit. If we are using the drill bit, in that case we need to keep in mind regarding the size and the depth should be less than twice the thickness of the material that we are joining if you are using drill bit in that case there is a problem and the problem is it is not very precision the precision degree it is not very accurate and in order to counteract this problem because the precision thing becomes very handy if we need to install this uh, countersinking hardware in place like pressurized skin or if I need to do large number of work so we need to have some degree of uniformity with a high degree of precision and there if we use the normal uh, drill for countersinking, it won't be a good work and it will be time consuming as well. And during that time, we use the stop countersinking or the countersinking tool. Because we require different depth of countersinking and that is why we have got the stop. Apart from that, the stop also helps to prevent the surrounding surface from getting damaged. For different size of the countersinking, we require different pilot size. So the pilots are interchangeable depending on the size of the countersink. For thin, we require dimpling. We have got coin dimpling and we have got the radius dimpling. If we require high precision dimpling, in that case coin dimpling, radius dimpling, if we don't require very high degree of precision in that case we will go for radius dimpling. Radius dimpling is fast, it is inexpensive, cheap, but we are not getting the desired degree of precision. In case we need to do dimpling in material which is hard where the deformation is difficult to achieve, in that case we can use heat to soften the metal prior to the dimpling. So how are you going to do that? Either heating the dye, male and female dye, using heated oil which will be circulated through some internal drill passage in the dimpling die or in the form of some electrical resistant coil which when turned on will heat up and the heat will be transferred to the metal and that's how the metal can get softer okay that's all you need to Any doubt so far?
Shall we take break for some time?